Hello guys, welcome back to my class and for those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Manuela Zadovnik, but you can call me Miss Zadovnik or Teacher Manu or Ms. Manuela, however you prefer. I am one of your fine arts teachers here at Vico and together we will be learning about art history while we do fun artistic activities together. That's right guys, so before I go any further, please don't forget to remind your friends and family to download the Vico app available on the Google Play Store and the App Store. Let them know about the amazing after school program that we have here to offer you not only fine arts but also oh my god Amanda how are you doing hello <laughs> oh wow we're gonna be doing inception right now look at that hi I'm looking at you right now too <laughs> there you go oh that is awesome uh so yeah uh, she's one of our teachers here which is she's currently right now giving her guitar class. Uh, we also have another guitar teacher. You can learn piano, ballet, um, yoga, Spanish, Chinese, uh, storytelling, life skills, so on and so forth. And we also have a um, like social features in the app where you can customize your own profile, post pictures, comment on other people's pictures, give them a like, so let them know about all of this. So, you know, we can grow as a community and have a lot of fun here together, all right? All right, guys, so let's keep it going, shall we? So uh, today we are covering a movement that is going to be new to us uh, here. We haven't covered it before. And also, we will be learning about a new artist. So, new movement that we haven't spoken about and new artists that we haven't covered yet. Okay, so many new things. So, today we are going to have our first glance at the vanguard movement called suprematism. What do you think that means? Try to, you know, try to make up your mind. Like, what does that mean? What do you have in mind? You know, like, what, what comes to mind when you hear suprematism? All right? Uh, and with it, we will learn about the artist. Let me show you. El Lizitsky. I know, he looks scared. I don't know what's... I couldn't find a better picture. That's him, okay? There he is with his concerned gaze. Uh, that's what I think. I don't know, because he looks like that to me. So yeah, we're going to be learning about him and suprematism. And for today's activity, we're going to do... Uh, our own suprematist art composition inspired in El Lizitsky's artwork. Okay, guys? All right. So, moving on. Suprematism. Uh, so, suprematism was an art movement originated in Russia, okay, in, in the country of Russia, uh, that focused mainly on the usage of geometric forms like circles, squares, rectangles, and they were painted uh, with just like a limited range of colors, okay? Um, so, long time ago, uh, I want to make a comparison because this kind of looks like uh, an art movement that we saw previously uh, and that was neoplasticism. So this might look a little bit similar to neoplasticism that we saw with Piet Mondrian. That was the artist that represented uh, neoplasticism for the main part. I think it was only him and another artist, but that was a movement that was particularly just, you know, like known to be... Um, you know, like connected to just one artist. It wasn't really like a group of people per se. Uh, so yeah, neoplasticism. Um, and it can relate a little bit, you know, uh, but although unlike suprematism, neoplasticism only used squares and rectangles and lines, like bold lines. But that was about it. They didn't use square, like circles, all right? So here we have something a little bit different. Um, because with suprematism, you have a little bit more freedom to use other geometric shapes. So something to keep in mind, okay? So if they ask you, like, what's the difference between suprematism and neoplasticism, you can say suprematism allows you to use, um, you know, other geometric forms, even though it has this sense of purity and whatnot. Um, it's not like neoplasticism that only uses squares and rectangles and lines, all right? Okay, so the movement was founded by Kazimir Malevich, and it was around 1913, uh, and was based, hear me out, it was based on the supremacy of pure artistic feeling. 
what do you guys think that means? Because I'm like, you know, supremacy of pure artistic feeling. So it will be like the maxed out way of, of feeling or artistically feeling. I don't know. That sounds confusing to me. I'm like, what? But yeah. So for today's activity, we'll be doing our own suprematist art composition. So here you have the source image that I picked up for us today. It's called Brown from 1922. Uh, I thought it wasn't too hard for us to do today. I mean, it's Friday, let's take it easy and all that. So the materials that you will need for this class are regular paper, mixed media sketchbook paper, whatever you want to use for today, colored pencils, crayons, markers, soft pastels, oil pastels, acrylic paints, or tempera paint, whatever type of medium that you want to use, you can pick from there. I mean, and anything actually, you know, you can even be only a pencil if you want to do everything black and white with a pencil or just with a pen. If there's any family member that wants to join you, mom, dad, a sibling, and they just have a pen, they can use that, you know, try to do that exercise, uh, mimic, or, you know, like try to recreate this piece right here. So we're going to start drawing. Okay. We're going to start doing our sketch here. It's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but then I feel that filling in the colors is going to be pretty easy. So yeah, we have, we have enough time to do this piece and, and really, you know, like excel on it. Okay. So the things that I told you that we will need is a ruler. We definitely need a ruler. So I'm just going to be using this for, for the sake of doing the lines, you know, like straight and all that. I have a tape. This is a plus. It's because as you can see on this, um, the first source image that I gave you, that is this one, I give you this other one. If you want to take up a harder challenge, you know, like if you're like, no, this is too simple. I want to do the other one that is next to it. Go ahead and do so. All right. If you want to do that, be my guest. I want to stick to the first one here. That is Brown 1922. I think he called a lot of his pieces Brown. Uh, but I don't have it at the top of my head, so don't quote me on that. Uh, so here we have this one. So I wanted to use a tape in order to make the circle, the, the red circle that you see there. Uh, so I think I'm going to start with a circle actually, because I think it's going to give me the guidance of how to organize everything else in the picture. I think everything, everything starts developing from the circle to this side. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's grab our pencil, have some razor here. If there's any mistake, it's okay. That can happen. You know, that sometimes that can happen. So I'm just going to start doing the circle right there. Yeah, I want to believe it was like this. All right. So there we have that. So let's start coloring everything. That's all the composition. So all we have left is color and then erase the excess of whatever we did um, previously. And that's about it. So I'm going to be grabbing some red. I'm going to use this strong red, um, some black, uh, a light gray. I actually need to use a very light gray and a medium gray. So we will see how that works. All right, so here I have the colors. So let's use the red first. I want to use that red and then we move on with everything else. So here's where the concentration really begins because I'm starting to cover everything up with the color, you know? Now I'm actually doing this circle by hand, but that's also very important because when you see the pieces of the artist, he actually, it's not like he was using a ruler to guide his hand while he was painting actually. So something good to keep in mind. Oh, we also have to erase this just so we don't get confused. So we don't get confused, we don't get confusion, right? Oh, and actually I wanna use this other side so I can really, really paint over it, you see? Oh, that's great. I get a sense of tidiness, you know, with this type of pictures. It's like very tidy. The composition becomes very tidy. 
uh, you really have to think about how clean it looks. And I think this is also something that ha was related to minimalism. Like those minimalist art pieces. And we finally have that light gray that I told you about, which is um, located on this one, actually. It's just like very softly, you know, very softly there. It's actually on this line too. Just gonna make it very softly here. All right, and we also have it down here. As well as this top here. And that's it. I mean, we have this part that is kind of like a yellow, uh, like a white. But the paper is white, so I don't know. I mean, how can I paint this? This is like white color, but I don't know. Yeah, it's not really making anything here. We tried, you know? If anything, maybe I can just do, this is something that I'm gonna do. You don't have to do it. We're already time is up too. We're just creating that line. So it can actually, you can actually tell, you know, like, oh, that is, um, that is a square, right? So guys, here you have it. Uh, as I told you, you can just wait for it a little bit to dry and then you can just erase the excess of any lines or, you know, like guided lines that you did, those like things. Sometimes we need to do so we can guide ourselves when we're doing a piece, right? Let me remove that from here. Let me show you. This is our final piece pretty nice right we just did our own supremacist composition or well we recreated one of el Zitsky's, uh supremacist uh compositions it was quickly got done you can do the frame if you want on the picture i didn't want to do it um i like it the way that it looks like this uh here you get to see the square and all that it looks very very interesting very fascinating uh so guys thank you so much for joining me today I hope you had, let me come back here. I hope you had a wonderful Friday with me. Uh, don't forget that I'm here on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, also, don't forget to remind your friends and family to join us here at the Vico app and that they can explore all of these amazing after school programs. Uh, that we have here to offer you as well as the social features that we have here where you can customize your own profile post pictures comment on other people's pictures so on and so forth so don't forget to mention them all of this uh, once again thank you so much for joining me today uh, have a great rest of your day and i will see you on the next one all right guys take care bye bye